So, in my introduction, I just said something obvious, but I want to drive you through some of the key concepts. Some of you know me and have seen me already using this material, but that's my kind of Bible. Um, and I want to make sure we are on the same page. Like I said before, I don't want to preach to anyone. I've never been in an association before this experience, and I hope we will be successful, but I know exactly what the market needs. So I try to synthesize what I believe is happening in the real economy. First of all, we talk about digital economy. What's digital economy? Digital economy is the transformation of the ecosystems, it can be economical, industrial, social, whatever, in that traditional model into a digital model. We can explain that with many words and hundreds of pages, but the simple way I explain it is we are moving into digitalization of ecosystems, which means, that's, that's why I was not flipping through correctly, that means we are uh, basically redesigning, it's a kind of digital twin of those ecosystems. To do that, we need to build common data spaces. So whoever talks about data spaces in kind of, it's a new generation of data lake, databases, data connectors, sorry, they are wrong and I take my accountability for my statements. Data spaces are the digitalization of value chains, which is a broader term, a broader concept. Everyone is impacted. There is no single sector in the industrial, economical, societal ecosystems. So, if that's true, let's look at the status of in Europe, uh, the state of the digital data economy in Europe. So you see on the left side of this slide that in Europe, this is the market capitalization of data um, company, let's say. They are listed companies, so we are not, of course, uh, capturing all the reality. But it's quite significant and it's quite stuck since years at the same level. We have less than 4%, I should say less than 3% of the overall data market share. And the numbers are 850 billion euro in 25, so just around the corner, which means 6% 6 uh, 6 of the European GDP. So per se, this is already a big number. But you look at who is holding the data economy. It's largely the United States, Asia growing. But look at the right side of this slide. We see on the far right, the state of the European cloud service provider. Is that a problem that the European cloud service providers are losing market? Per se not, but it is an indicator that we are becoming hostage of non-European cloud service providers. And the cloud stands to digital like the motorways stand to cars. So you can be the best in Europe building the best and fastest cars, but if the motorways are out of our control, you can imagine how uh, difficult this can be. Look at the top of this slide. This is the good part of it. There is a lot of opportunities. The 5G, the 6G, the growth in sensorization everywhere in every sector. There is no single device. There is no single machine that is not producing the data. It's incredible. And there's a big amount of request for interoperable, switchable, portable technologies. So the industry is ready, the world is ready, the data are there, we're just missing the technology? No, we are missing the trust to make this happen. And we are losing the momentum. So, a quick prediction on what's happening in 2025 is the following. The cloud service provider, the European cloud service provider, will see their market share falling down below 10%. It's happening. The European, uh, let me say, data economy will amount 8 to 10% of the GDP. But that's the tip of the iceberg because all the products and services from cars to fridges, they are based on data. So actually, the iceberg is that 50 to 70%, this is what economists say, of the economy will be directly or indirectly driven by data. So the competition of any company is at stake here. It's not just a, an IT GX kind of matter. The Euro European economy footprint is largely made by small medium enterprise. 
we are in a small country with respect to other countries in Europe, in the center of many small countries from the uh, Central Eastern Europe, our economy is driven 80 to 80 to 90 percent by small medium enterprises. They are fragmented, they cannot compete. Therefore, we need to create federated ecosystems. Federated ecosystems are more resilient and more competitive. Also, the dependency on data is becoming huge in the public and in the private sector. Still, 80% of our data are untapped. We're not using them. We keep preaching we need more data. Wrong. We have much more data than what we know and far much more data than what we can make use of. Therefore, we need to, we need to start building data spaces, which are these safe places that, you know, uh, basically uh, enclose ecosystems where you can share the data in a safe way, not for the sake of it, but because you need the data of all the participants in order to improve your production processes, in improve your quality, reduce your time to market, reduce your mean time to repair, and on and on and on. The only way is to create common data spaces. Last but not least, there cannot be any sovereignty, political sovereignty, because sovereignty is a political term. It's not a technical term. We can talk about controllability of technology, not sovereignty of technology. But there cannot be any political sovereignty without digital sovereignty. And that, that's simple. Sovereignty means the authority and the possibility to apply laws in a sovereign territory in the political definition. But how can you ensure that your regulation, even though it's the best regulation in the world, like European regulation, is applied, is verifiable, is verified? How can you ensure the service you're buying is compliant to the GDPR, the Data Act, the, 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 the Data Market Act, the Digital Market uh, Act, the Digital Service Act, and on and on? It's impossible. It's almost impossible. And we are living now, as I speak, this big dilemma also at the European Commission level. They realize regulation is necessary and important, but there cannot be regulation without some methods of verification of this regulation. And without bridging the gap, the trust will be lacking. So we need to build trusted platform. We need to build common data spaces to digitize the value chains, and we need to do it in a federated way. That's what we preach at GAIAX and what we try to achieve. Basically, we ask the question, if technology is so important, are we in control of technology or are we controlled by technology? And everybody would agree with me that possibly we are not so much in control of the technology we use today. Therefore, we need to get back control of our technology, moving from a technology that is largely hyper-concentrated, opaque, and proprietary into a model that is much more open, because you cannot be interoperable if you are not open, transparent because we want to give back the control and the freedom of choice to the users of technologies and distributed. Why? Because data are distributed. Also, we ask ourselves, are we ready? Our ecosystems are ready for this data economy. The data ecosystem is fragmented. Yes, we have a lot of data, but they are all fragmented and most of them are not utilized. There is no single way to share the data. So we looked at the bottom side of the X. Are our infrastructures, ecosystems ready? And the, the answer is no, it's a clear no. They are often uh, following proprietary standards, not interoperable by design, not by accident, and non-reversible, non, let me say, integratable in many ways. So we have all we need, but simply it's different pieces of the jigsaw that we are not putting together in a single picture. That's the picture we want to build. So the X, if you want to visualize Gaia X in one single picture, represents two parts. The top part of the X is the data ecosystem. The lower part of the X is the infrastructure ecosystems. We want to create, you know, federated data ecosystems and federated infrastructure ecosystems. How we do that? Through these three pillars. Again, we ask ourselves, what are the minimum set of ingredients you need to build trust. And we came, uh, we came out with these three pillars. We need, you need data exchange mechanisms, of course, yes. But you need federation mechanisms, of course, because you need to federate across multiple points. Uh, one of my jokes uh, I made in my speeches is that if I should reinvent the cloud today, 
I would not name it cloud. I would name it roots because actually the cloud is something up in the air while the technology we need is something very grounded and distributed all over the planet. So we need federation. And of course, we need compliance to verify that those technologies comply to a commonly agreed upon set of rules. This is an important point. If we really, if you agree with me that trust is a problem, then you need one solution. You cannot have many multiple trusted definition of what the truth is, because that's again what the best technology providers have tried to convince us. Come with me, my technology is the best. Come with me, my technology is best. My technology is the best, I'm trustworthy, but none of them talk to each other and none of them use the same trust schema. That's simply what we're trying to do. GAIAX was established in 21 as a non-for-profit association. You may ask yourself, well, that's big. I thought this was a governmental project. Yes, it was started as a Franco-German governmental project back in 2019 under the endorsement of Minister Altemeyer, former Minister, Minister of uh, Economy of Germany, and Minister Bruno Le Maire, the Minister of uh, Economy in France. And it became a non-for-profit international association all as a sudden because all the countries, all the European countries said we want to be part of it and not only European. So our association actually embraces all users of technologies and providers of technologies from all over the world. But we are driving the project according to the European principles of transparency, controllability, interoperability, and user-centric values that drive our principles. So our board of director can only be um, constituted by European companies. But we are open, so anybody can join the association. And like Tobias said before, we now have plus than 20 hubs, and uh, you know many of them are outside of Europe. Why? Because the values and the principle we are talking about have no flagship. Everybody needs that. There is no single definition of trust. There is no single platform to control trust. There is no single way to implement this regulation by automation, which is one of our mantras and they realize that possibly GAIAX is doing it. What we do, we develop specification, code, and qualification mechanisms, labels, in, 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 uh, in specifically. What we don't do, we are not a formal standardiz standardization body. We are a totally private association, and we are not delivering any service. We are pre-competitive, non-commercial. Our members and non-members will be free to develop GAIAX compliance services. What we do is simply with the definition of the rules, of the architecture, and of the component of the so-called GAIAX framework, which allows for those uh, three uh, mechanisms, uh, compliance, federation, and data exchange. This is the GAIAX framework. So we've been working hard. You can go on our website and you will find this easy to read matrix three by three. There is three columns, compliance, federation, and data exchange. You already saw them before. And three rows, functional specification, technical specifications, and code. So we are developing this framework and making it available to everybody. All you see is open source. But now let me deep dive a second into what I think should be interesting in these two days. What is data spaces really? So isn't like data gathering, data exchange, data lakes? Well, let's look at that. Industry 4.0 was talking about data gathering. So where you have multiple interfaces, where you have to grab the data to you know, establish interfaces one another. Yes, it was happening, but it was difficult, complicated, and there was uh, a usage of technology considered as an enabling technology. But if you want to understand the difference with data spaces, data spaces is a place where all people are participants in a federation. So they trust each other, they trust each other identity, they trust each other technology, etc. Data can flow seamlessly. It's like being in the neighbor and every house has got the door open. You can browse through, of course. I decide which rooms I want you to visit, but the door is open for you full accessibility, and controllable technologies. In a, in a single word, the difference between data exchange and data spaces is trust. So let's look, maybe deep dive, because you will have the chance to speak with the projects. Let's try to scratch our head on 
what does it take to make a data space? So the data space problem is creating trust across participants, if you think about that. Why? Because participants in a data space are typically suppliers or customers or even competitors or partners. So you can understand it's difficult to create a new economical model where my enemy becomes my partner. It's called co-opetition. What's the problem? Well, you can create the best federation you see on the left side here. Nonetheless, there will be people outside of your federation. You have to think about it. Maybe your provider himself is using providers or your partner himself is using competitors and on and on and on. So the problem from the business perspective is you need to identify the business case. You need to sell in, inside your organization the need to create a federation and a common data space. You need to identify the potential participants, convince them, build consensus, find business outcomes that are of interest of everybody because it, is, it must be a win-win for everybody. I'm not giving you, you my data if you don't give me value back. The technical problem is you need to have a trusted way to identify the identity, a trusted way to uh, verify the credentials of the services. A trusted way to control access and usage of the data. A trusted way to extend your federation. You have to use trusted data infrastructures. You have to have a trusted model of governance of your federation. And you have to trust the federator, which is, by the, by the way, the coordinator of the federation. You have to have a one-stop place to provide all these things. So the solution is having a trust framework helps and build a trust engine. GAIAX here helps. There is nothing like that on the market. Think about it. But if you look at the problem when it becomes bigger, so federations, multiple federations coming together. So you may have built a federation of manufacturing in Austria, but all of a sudden you want to extend it in another one in Hungary or elsewhere. It's happening. Federations will expand. Or cross-sectorial federation. You can imagine the ESG is imposing that any business start collecting data from other businesses. You need satellite data, you need geospatial data, you need uh, you know, uh, economical data to build you know, your ESG index, just to make a simple example. So when you expand the problems, the business problem remains and possibly is even bigger because you have to convince more participants, you have to find more common elements of interest across all the participants, and on and on and on. Still, the technical problem exists, but it's one. You need to trust the trust frameworks of the others. You see what the problem is? So if everybody is using the same trust framework, the scalability will be a no-brainer. Here, the solution must be GAIAX because reinventing the wheel or pretending to impose different trust models to others is going to be simply impossible. What we are trying to do now, we are moving into the delivery phase. GAIA-X has started defining what I'm talking about in 21. That was the one of definition of GAIA-X. Started developing it in 2022, and now in 2023, we are, devel we are deploying the first GAIA-X digital clearing houses. What are them? Single point of verification of the GAIAX compliance. One stop place you go if you want to know how to become compliant, if you want to join federation, if you want to create your own federation, if you want to create your own catalog. So all the questions about what GAIAX is, how do I make use of it, we are providing an answer as we speak. We have a plan of delivery of the clearinghouse, and the first drop is going to be March 23, so the end of this month. My friend Roland Fadrani will explain this roadmap. But the good news is that we're not just preaching. We are delivering it, and there will be an answer, concrete answer, to whoever wants to join the GAIAX ecosystem. Last, I wanted to end with uh, one slider. Like I said at the beginning, I spend most of my time talking about GAIAX. And to me, the most important thing is having somebody speaking on my behalf. Possibly, I want facts to speak on my behalf, because words fly away. In Italian, we say, a parole siamo a zero. <laughs> words are, you know, value of the words is zero. So let me look at some pictures of today. Summit 2021, we had 300 plus members. Uh, today, we have 366 members, and they are growing. I can tell you we will exceed 400 in a, in a few weeks. Uh, in 2021, we didn't have any lighthouse projects. Today you will see 
11 lighthouse projects. But I can tell you that besides the lighthouse projects, we have 110 projects in our catalog that we are still going through the process of documenting. It's incredible. Hubs, we have grown from, 20, uh, from 14 to 21. Actually, we have even more than 21 if we count the three US hub. If we count them as one, it's 21, otherwise it's 24. Anyway, lots of them. Verticals, catalog items, this is interesting. We started developing a catalog of the services of the GAIA-X compliance services, which is a demo catalog because the compliance services are not yet up and running. But once we switch them on, those services can become real. You can count them. We have more than 1,500 1, services ready to be published as GAIA-X compliance services. When this will happen? In the course of this year, once we switch on the compliance services. And like I said, there is a roadmap. But by the end of this year, gaia -X will be concrete. Clearing houses, we didn't have any. Now we're going to switch on the first two. And I'm sure Austria will be one of the nodes uh, that we are switching on very soon. So I want to conclude saying this. Uh, this is the slide I've used at the last summit, and I quite like it. Because somebody in my communication team entitled the, uh, my speech as State of the Union, which was my, let me say, nickname internally. I said, I need to make a State of the Union speech. But they made the title State of the Union. I said, I'm not president for the alliance, so I cannot talk about the State of the Union. But then I said, well, actually, we are the European Union for that economy, because we are putting together the regulation aspect, the economy aspect, the technology aspect, and try to build something that it's a real European Union for economy. So I'm very proud to have you here. I hope I managed to give you a little bit of um, information. I will be walking around, and my job is to talk to anybody who wants to reach out to me in these two days. And thank you for supporting us, and enjoy the rest of the conference.